Understand the essentials for motion tracking in Blender to achieve near-perfect results almost every time. Okay, let's get started. First, add a new workspace. Go to VFX and motion tracking. Next, you need to go to open and select your video. Now we want to check the file path information. Make sure our scene has the same resolution as the video and also has the same frames per second set. Now we can start tracking. You can select set scene frames to match your timeline to the video. Then click prefetch to precache the scene, making working a lot faster. Onto the tracking settings. First, motion model. We have six options here. For this one, we are going with affine as it seems to work in most scenarios. The others are all pretty self-explanatory, but you can test out other options to suit your video. I also recommend enabling normalize as this will ensure Blender can find the pattern even where lighting changes in the scene. Now let's start adding some markers manually to understand how they work. You can press add, then click on a spot in your scene or press control and left mouse button on your selected area. The best places to select are dark spotted areas with detail. Once you pick a spot, it's best to go to the track tab on the side and you will get a small preview of where the marker is. You can move it around like normal and pick a spot. Once you have a spot locked in, you can start tracking. Just go down to tracking or use these buttons above the timeline or simply press control plus T. Let it work its magic and then rewatch it with the tracking preview window to ensure the marker stays on track. For us, this one worked perfect. If you do not want to do this manually, you can always use detect features. This will automatically add in markers across the scene for you. Then of course, you will need to track your markers. Just use control plus T. Once it's finished, you can then take a look at the graph. This is where all your marker keyframes are. You can manually find markers that have not done what you want. As you will see strange spikes, this does depend on your scene though. If you have a lot of movement, this will be a lot wilder than what you see here. But as ours is straightforward, it should look a little cleaner. Like for example, this spike here. If we select it, then look through the timeline, you'll see the marker go completely off track. We don't want this. As we have a lot of markers, we can just delete this one, but we will show you more ways to clean up shortly. Next, let's go on to solve to start making this setup work. First, I'll go ahead and check keyframes. So Blender automatically tracks the keyframes for me, which you can also do manually. Then go ahead and press solve camera motion. The only thing we need to look out for here once complete is our solve error. We need to be below one pixel, but preferably below 0.5 pixels. Our solve errors come back really good at 0.97 pixels, but we can do a few things to make this even better. First, go to clip display and enable info to get all the information on the markers. If you have a lot of markers, I like to use this tracking section here. You will see the markers with bat solve errors, like this one, for example, at 11.7 pixels. We can just delete this one. Then again, this one below with 10 pixels. And if you scrub through the timeline, you will see the jump in the track preview window. Again, delete this. Then other ways to clean up these errors, you can change the color channel, so help it locate darker spots. If it's a marker you want to keep, you can also reduce the weight of the marker to basically have less say on the control of the overall camera movement. After those little changes, let's press solve camera motion again, and you can see we got it down to 0.68 pixels. But let's keep going. If we select another high solve error tracker and scrub the timeline, we have a marker here with the majority of the marker having a solid path, but goes off track at the end. We can find where it loses focus and then press this button here to clear the whole path on that marker from that point. Once again, clicking solve camera motion will give us a new update and we now have it down to 0.58 pixels. As you can see with these fine tuning tweaks, we can get it down to a good number. All you need to do is keep going through the list of markers and clear all the high solve errors and either clean them up or remove them. Now, if your scene doesn't have any floor markers, like ours for example, I'm gonna add in some manual markers. Track them with control plus T, solve camera motion and I can see it's uh, gone up a little. So the final stage, I will enable focal length, optical center, and radial distortion and do one final solve camera motion, taking our final solve error to 0.43 pixels. The next stage is now setting up the tracking scene. Select that button here and you'll see a plane and a cube appear. Now we wanna set an origin from one of our markers. Pick a marker on the floor and click set origin. Now we wanna select three markers in a triangle shape and then press the floor button to set the floor. You can also do this for the walls. We will also need to set the X or Y axis by selecting a marker and hitting set X axis, for example. Sometimes this will solve all the issues for you and line it up perfect, but as ours is still a little off, we can problem solve. First, I will need to turn on motion tracking under viewport display to show our markers in the viewport. Now I can adjust the camera manually. The goal is to have the floor and cube in sight with the floor markers touching the ground mesh. So scale and adjust your camera until it lines up. You can also rotate it. The main thing you need to get right here is having those bottom markers lined up with the ground. If we hide the ground layer and press play, we can make sure the markers are not slipping, which ours look pretty good. Next, make sure your cube is in the foreground collection and scale it in the scene to where you want it to be. As you can see here, it looks like it's slipping. 
This is because the cube is not on the floor mesh, so I'll quickly make sure it's sitting flush on the ground. Now when I press play, it works perfect. No slipping on the tracked video, and it looks like it's in the actual scene. Now we can start adding in anything we want and it will just fit perfectly into your scene. Just make sure it's in the foreground collection. Our next stage is adding a HDRI to light the scene. So we will need to be in cycles for this. We also need to go to film and select transparent so the HDRI is hidden. If you didn't record and capture the HDRI yourself, let's find one that matches the scene the best. I can then go ahead and start adjusting the intensity strength of the HDRI to best match the scene. You can also use the compositor later to adjust the colors. We can also check out two layers, the foreground and background. If we select the background, we will see this is the shadow catcher layer. Now, I'm going to use our PolyRender Pro add-on for faster renders and set the color management to standard, which is recommended for motion tracking. Let's do our first render to see how it renders out. You'll see it renders the foreground, which is the object, then the shadows, and then combines them for you. And here it is. So let's check out the compositor. We have three layers, the movie clip, the background, and the foreground. If you want to adjust the coloring, you can do that here to each layer to achieve the look you want. And that's the basics of motion tracking. If you have any questions, drop a comment, and don't forget to like and subscribe.